If the view that you see through your finder scope doesn't match the view that you see through your telescope, then the finder scope is not aligned properly and it's going to be really hard to find anything in the sky. Fortunately, the fix is super easy and it doesn't matter what kind of telescope you have. Let's go ahead and get this finder scope aligned. There are three common ways for aligning the finder scope tube in the finder scope holder. This is one of the simplest. It has these three screws that apply pressure from three different directions that allow you to move it within the holder. This type is similar except it only has two adjustable screws for side to side and up and down. This third pin is a spring that's always pushing on the tube. The most common these days is the red dot finder. These only have two adjustable knobs. The one at the back, you turn this to make your red dot go up and down. The one at the front makes the red dot go side to side. Don't get these two confused with this knob right here in the middle. This is actually the power switch and the dimmer control. Cool bonus, at the end of this video, I'll walk you through some of the more common troubleshooting issues that you can run into with these finder scopes. And then I'll show you a few more of the more interesting ones that I've discovered in the field, including this very unique one. So stay tuned. But now let's get back to the business of aligning your finder scope. If this is your first time aligning a finder scope, I highly recommend you do this during the day, but be careful. Don't point the telescope anywhere towards the sun or watch out for those reflections. Those can hurt your eyeballs too. Some people use the top of a telephone pole or a high voltage tower or even a chimney, as long as it's sufficiently far away. And of course, make sure the target is not hostile. However, if you must do this at night and a far away light post isn't possible, I recommend using the North Star, sometimes called Polaris. It's easy to find. It's the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper. Of all the stars, it's the one that doesn't really rotate as the night goes on. If you try to use any of the other popular stars, you will be amazed at how fast they move and you'll be chasing a moving target and that'll make it 10 times harder. By the way, distance matters a lot here. When you pick your target, make sure that it's at least a half a mile or farther away. The farther, the better. Any closer and you get into a weird situation where the finder scope and the telescope actually start to point towards each other and that's gonna totally mess up the alignment when you're finally looking at objects in the night sky. Let's start out with the lowest magnification eyepiece that we have. This one says 25. This one says 15. 25 is larger than 15, so we'll go with the 25. Put it in the telescope and lock it in. Now try your best to point the telescope at your desired target. This is why we're starting out with low magnification. Later on, you can switch to an eyepiece with more magnification to really dial it in, but for now, we're keeping it simple. You may have to hunt around a bit to find your target, but when you do, Try to get it centered in the view. If the view is blurry, turn the focuser knob. If it starts to get even blurrier, turn it the other way. If you just can't get it into focus, that means you've probably chosen the target that is too close to you. If all you see is blackness, then remove the dust cover. It happens to the best of us. We know that the telescope is pointed at the target. Now we're going to adjust the finder scope adjustment screws so that we can get it pointed properly at the target. Keep in mind that depending on your setup, the image in your viewfinder may be upside down or backwards depending on if you have a corrected image finder scope. Just go slowly and adjust accordingly. Keep adjusting until it is centered in the crosshairs or on the red dot. This may take some trial and error, but I know you can do it. Now that the finder scope is dialed in, we're going to go back to the telescope and double check everything. We're going to make sure that the target is still centered in the view on the telescope. Now go back to the finder scope and see if you need to make any tiny adjustments. And while you're doing that, this would be a perfect time to push the like and subscribe buttons. It means the world to a tiny channel like this. If you want to improve the accuracy of your finder scope even more, replace the low magnification eyepiece 
with the eyepiece that had the smaller number on it. That will give you more magnification. Lock it in, then repeat the last few steps. If your finder scope is blurry when you look through it, that means you'll just have to adjust this lens up here. And this is done by threading this or unthreading it. Now, if it doesn't budge, there's a good chance that it has the secondary lock ring that keeps it from moving. You'll have to back this off a little bit, and then that'll allow you to thread this in or thread it out. Now, it is possible to go too far to the point where this actually falls off. Don't do that. As you're adjusting this and trying to find the focal point, you know, point it at something that is far away and try to get it just in focus. And once you get the right spot, take this lock ring and thread it forward so that this all locks together and keeps it in good focus. If your finder scope has a groove like this, there's supposed to be an O-ring there. I know sometimes a lot of people, when they get a telescope, especially if they get it used, the O-ring is either gone or it's gotten rotten and it just fell off. You can go to a place like O'Reilly's and get a new O-ring for less than a dollar. So you get your O-ring, you put it on here, and it does actually two things. If you look at the front of the holder right here, you can see there's a lip. And that is a place where you can put this in and it just locks it into place. That's kind of like a little shelf where the O-ring locks everything together. That also allows it to be kind of a fulcrum so that as you adjust this with the adjustment screws, it rotates about that O-ring almost as a rotation point. These red dot finders are everywhere these days. These are super common on new telescopes being sold. The two main problems that I see with these are the intermittent red dot, and then there's the red dot that's way off in left field that makes it almost impossible to line this up. Now, the intermittent red dot is usually caused by one of two things. The first is just a bad switch. Unfortunately, that's just a bit of bad luck, and it's really not worth fixing, i found, because these things are basically so cheap to buy brand new. The second cause, though, is a loose battery. Let me take this off and show it to you. The battery is just a watch battery, and it's held in with this spring-loaded clip there. Now, sometimes, due to manufacturing issues, that spring clip is pretty loose. I found a great fix is to take a thin metal washer, you put it between the spring and the battery, and then you put the lid back on, and oftentimes that fixes the intermittent red dot problem that can be common with these. Now, if the red dot is way off in left field or you just can't get it lined up, I found that one of the most common causes for that is that the glass disc that's in this portion right here is not pushed all the way in. There's actually a retainer ring in here that during manufacturing is supposed to push this so that it is perpendicular with the body here, but sometimes it's not. And so when the red dot goes there and tries to reflect, it comes off at a weird angle and it makes it really hard to get this aligned. So the trick that I've used, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, is to just basically put your finger in the end and push that lens in there and make sure it's flush against the edge there. And sometimes you can push that retainer ring in if it's not properly glued in. Sometimes on rare occasions, there is actually a third problem that we see with these. And that's where even with the lens properly placed and the adjustment screws at their extents, you still can't get enough adjustment to get the red dot lined up with the view on the telescope. That sometimes comes down to how the mount block is attached to the telescope. But I'm going to show you a trick on how you can sort of uh, assist that. So this is just mounted in a dovetail. You can see it like that, right? Just the dovetail. It goes in there and you tighten this bolt. Well, if you can't get enough tilt like this, just take some shim stock. I use a business card for the most part. And you put it right there. And then you carefully put the finder scope back in without moving the shim stock. And you tighten it down. And oftentimes, that gives you enough tilt to get it all lined up. Now, sometimes you do have to use one, two, or three layers of business card shim stock. <laughs> if you travel at all, or even during just the daily use of your telescope, this will eventually get bumped and possibly knocked out of alignment. However, after you've done the steps in this video just a couple of times, realigning this will take less than 30 seconds. 
This type here looks familiar. This was around for a long time. I don't really see this very often. This one has kind of a special feature. It's a hole right here. And if we hold that up close to the camera, you can see right through it. That's a, a bit of a peep sight that we use on this particular finder scope. That allows you to quickly get the telescope in the general direction and then use the optical tube to get it fine-tuned on what you really want to see. I'll share a top tip with these. These have just the three screws. There, there's no O-ring up here that takes up the gap. So this thing really floats in there. What I like to do is I wrap some electrical tape around this and that eats up the gap between the tube and the holder. And it gives it basically a fulcrum point so that when you adjust these three adjustment screws, they tilt about this point up here. Also, I should mention that if this one is blurry, then the adjustment is back here at the back end. This very large finder scope that you see here is kind of special. It's called a right angle corrected image finder scope. Uh, that's an RACI or RACCI for short. This has all the features of the high quality finder scopes. It has an O-ring going around here. It has the two adjustment screws with the constant spring loaded pin right here. This one has one feature though that I love about these things and that the image comes down this way, goes through the diagonal and comes up. This is super handy on your telescope because uh, when the telescope is tilted up, you can look down into it instead of kneeling down on the ground and looking up like you would through any of these tube finder scopes. So I like to say that these things are real neck savers. These two are reticle based HUD projection finder scopes. These are actually pretty darn cool. This one is a Telrad and it's been around, I think, since the 1970s. And you look at it actually through this direction. And what it does is it projects some concentric red circles onto the glass. In order to aim this, this does have three adjustment screws, just like any good finder scope. This is the power switch and the dimmer. Let's take a look at what this looks like. I'm gonna turn the power switch on. There we go. What's interesting is that the circles are focused at infinity. So if you're looking at your target far away, then you'll see the circles just kind of floating there up in the dome of the sky. It's a, it's a pretty neat effect, I have to uh, say. That little circle that you see in the middle is the same size as a full moon. This is one that's made by Rigel Systems. It's actually much smaller than this, but it's pretty much uh, the same thing. This has adjustment screws on it, and this one offers the ability to have the circles blink. Let's take a look at the Rigel. This one's kind of interesting because the controls are all on the front. So we're going to turn the power switch on. You can't see anything, obviously, because you got to flip it around to look at the glass. And there's the circles. I don't know why they're not coming into focus. Just must be something. Oh, there we go. There must be something with my camera. That middle circle is uh, a half degree wide. So basically, it's the same size as a full moon. This has three adjustment screws on it, so you can aim it properly. It also has this little screw down here, which causes it to blink. Let's see if we can get it to blink. There, it's blinking. If you know what good that blinking is for, let me know down in the comments section. And now for the most important step of all. No matter what telescope you have, take it outside and have fun. Clear skies, everybody. Oh, hi, you know, if you liked any of the finder scopes that were in this video, I put links to the product pages down below in the description box. And while you're waiting for those links to load, check out another one of these videos. This is a good one.